It's the last skill of skill set rugby, but a very important one. Let me show you what's going to happen here. This is called fielding and up and under. Very important skill to learn because it gives you confidence. Anytime someone kicks the ball on you, you're going to be fine. You know, you don't want to be that kid who stands kind of in the back. Right in the back, nice and skinny. When I was a rugby player, I was the skinniest, smallest little kid on the field. Luckily, I knew how to catch a ball. So you can hear the, the opposition coach say, Hey guys, um, you got to kick on that small kid. But then they kick on me, or they kick on guys like my, my mate who could catch a ball properly out of the sky. And the next thing the coach says, Okay, don't kick on him anymore. You know, so you kind of you, you take that sting out, but you also give yourself a lot of confidence if you know the skill. All right, so let's go through your key factors of the skill. Number one, you got to get able. You have to jump to catch the ball. And let me show you why. Here comes the bomb, like a bullet. It's going to land over there. I say you're standing here. All right, and the ball lands right in front of you. This is a rugby ball. It's not a soccer ball that's friendly and cute and jumps into your arms. This thing can, can, can bounce anyway. And here, is like an army of defenders chasing you and hungry to tackle you into another blood group. All right. You do not want that ball to bounce because it's going to be a clown show. Okay. So that's number one. Let's meet the ball halfway. Catch it in the air. Because if we catch it there, two things happen. Number one, it can't bounce in front of us. So you've already canceled that, that calamity, that clown show out. And number two, the rules of rugby says as soon as I get with my body into the air to catch a ball, I become a princess. Okay, beautiful princess. Let's put a little bit of a bow there in the hair. You're a princess because no one's allowed to touch you. So if you have a little sister, you know that way when she can be a little bit difficult and she squeals when you when you do anything and your parents always give out to you she's a little princess the exact same thing happens in rugby as soon as you jump up to catch a ball okay so what you want to do is if the ball let's say comes what's a good example the ball flies towards you through the air but you're standing right underneath it now you don't know oh do i Catch the ball, do I jump up? It's, it's coming right at me. Step back two or three steps and then zip, go and jump into the ball still. Even if you step to the side and zip, jump this way into the ball. Just get into the air so that you can become a princess. No one's allowed to touch you as soon as they do. It's a penalty for your team. Sometimes the guy even gets sent off with a nice yellow card. Okay, so that's an important thing and that is key factor number one. Key factor number two, we stop when our man starts doing it. Look at his shoulders. See how he starts to turn his shoulders against the opposition. Okay, have a look here as he goes a little bit further. Now by the time he lands, his shoulders are facing the opposition. It's much better for these guys to tackle into your side, into your shoulders, than it is to tackle you from the front. Okay, so you can protect yourself a lot better if your shoulders face the opposition and not your front. The second really cool thing about this is as you turn mid-air, your ball moves to the back instead of to the front. Okay, so the ball now faces this way, which means if you knock it on, it's not going to roll forward, it's going to roll backwards. So it's not really a knock on that the ref's going to blow the whistle and say, it's a scrum for the opposition team. He's going to let the ball continue rolling on the floor. And from there, you guys can play it again. But at least it's not a knock on because you turned your shoulders. And now any ball that drops out of your arms drops backwards. Okay, does that make sense? It's kind of like a cool little inbuilt thing about this technique. You get two for the price of one. Now we look at key factor number three. Land on both feet. Now you're going to say to me, yeah, this is like the grubber. Why must I point my foot if, if, if I've already kicked it? Now you're looking if my, if, my, if my toes are pointed. It makes no sense. The same here, you want to land on both feet. But the reason this is so important is before you've even jumped, say you are there, 
in the air. Now you already need to, in your mind, think, I need to fall on both feet. And what that's going to cause is for your whole body and everything you do from there on to kind of balance itself out. A bit like a cat does when it falls off a roof. It balances its body out so that it falls on two feet. And in doing so, everything becomes nicely balanced. When you finally fall and you land, you're going to be on both feet and you're going to be so much more balanced. Again, to withstand this army of tacklers. Let's ha see what happens when someone doesn't land on both feet. I'll show you here. All right, look there. He lands on one foot. So here comes the army. And imagine someone was to strike him right there. I mean, even your little sister or your granny would be able to bump you over if you're standing on one foot with your hands in the air having just caught a ball. Okay. Also, as you can see, because he's not balanced, his shoulders are not turned. If he knocks on the ball now, it's a straight knock on. Or there is advantage for this team playing this way. They can pick up the ball and possibly go and score. All right, so very, very important and key factor. Three to remember to land on both feet. Zip. All right, let's just quickly recap, guys. Number one, climb in the air because you become a princess. Number two, turn your shoulder so that you have a bit of a shield against the defense. And number three, land on both feet so that you have balance. And you can fight whatever is coming. All right, now a very, very simple way to train this exercise or this skill is to stand close to a wall. To find any wall in your house, say there, Make yourself a little target with a piece of tape. Now you stand over here. You throw the ball to yourself. Up in the air. So that it kind of lands here onto your target. Give it a split second or so. Then you run forward. And as you then leap in the air to catch the ball. Make sure you turn your shoulders so that when you land on both feet. Your shoulders face the wall. If you train without a wall, you're going to get cheeky. And that's not going to be realistic like it is in a game. There's always going to be someone who chases you. So that wall is, is kind of like your defenders. It's, it's something you have to be scared of and it's something you have to kind of prepare yourself for. And that's why you're going to focus on landing on both feet. All right. So let's see if this guy manages to escape the wall. So there's the wall that I've drawn for him. He wants to climb up, and at the time that he falls, he wants to make sure his shoulders face the wall. He lands on his target, and he lands on both feet. All right, so this is something you can train yourself. Do not annoy your mom and your dad or someone else to throw the ball for you. You can train this skill perfectly well by working with yourself, a rugby ball, and a wall at home or at school or anywhere you can find one. That was your skill set training. I hope you enjoyed it. This is your last kind of sessions that you have to engage with. So enjoy yourself. Go and train hard. And I'll see you when you write the test.